it's, uh, it's great to be back with the Corey Poirier Show. I'm also excited to have, uh, I'll, I'll call her our first time guest. We've done one interview, I believe, before, uh, but first time guest for this new show. And so, Jen Filson, really excited to have you here today. Where I'd like to start is to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about who you are? And I say that, I mean, I know people always say, well, how far back do you want me to go? But I just think for people to get a feel for what you do. Gotcha. Well, uh, I own two businesses, Rockstar Marketing, it's a digital online marketing agency, and the West Coast Swing Dance Company. Uh, two passions of mine that I've blended into two careers that, uh, interestingly enough, kind of simultaneously coexist. And um, in my marketing agency, I help take small business owners uh, do their social media marketing, do their SEO content on their website. Pretty much I create a buzz about their business and help them reach their next million dollars in revenue. And then in dance, I teach West Coast Swing and I recently released a new book, What Dancing Taught Me About Running a Successful Business, which I just spoke about, which is awesome. <laughs> Very cool. I, and I want to ask you about that in a minute too. Uh, but what I want to ask you about the uh, social media and the marketing side first is I often wonder where what the catalyst is for people to go in that direction because it's you know a lot of businesses and careers we can see okay clearly defined somebody you know grew up and they were they did accounting I have a friend who was an accountant and she used to do accounting with her teddy bears at eight years of age so it's a clear line to see how she got into that I used to play music in clubs if you watch me playing music and how much I love music clear line but social media came along after we, a lot of us had already been grown up, if you will. Right. So my question out of that is, what's your background in, in terms of like, what drove you to that? And, and were you, did you work for other companies doing it? Did you start on your own and have success? Or just where did that come from? So this is a great story. It actually explains why I'm called Rockstar Marketing. So in 2007, I was marketing director for a construction company. Just as the Great Recession in the United States was starting to happen, but it hadn't really hit the construction industries too hard yet. But in 2007, I released my very first music album. I'm a singer-songwriter, and I chose to market this on my own. I did not have an agent. I did not have a record label behind me. I was using this brand new thing called MySpace mm. and a newly released thing called Facebook and Twitter that came to the masses. And I thought, ooh, this would be a great way for me to promote my music. I used those three platforms and became the, the social media expert that I am today. Ironically, when I was doing all that promotion of my music, I was doing it just dedicating time to it every day. It wasn't as big as it is now. It wasn't as mammoth as it is now. But I certainly was dedicating time every single day to promoting the music. And so I qualified for 10 Grammy nominations on the first album, and I qualified for eight Grammy nominations on the second album in 2009. So 2007, 2009, I was certainly a pioneer, and I can remember a lot of businesses were giving side eye. Like, that stuff's trendy. That, I don't need to advertise on that. I've got the yellow pages and my friends who will send me business. Lo and behold, here we are, 2019, and in 2018, internet consumption surpassed television consumption. And so, yes, social media marketing and the networks that they are on are definitely ubiquitous and here to stay and surpassing the reach of the television network. So, it's a fascinating time to be in it. And I never thought I could say I was a pioneer, but yeah, I was pretty much <laughs> one of the first ones. And now it's a commodities market. Now I need to stay on top and say, uh, yeah, I've been doing this a long time, everyone else is relatively new to it, um, and here's what makes me special and unique, and here's why my stuff is so awesome. So, a follow up to that, and, and it's on the Grammy side, because now you'd be curious on that, but I will say that it's interesting you say about 2007, because that's when I jumped onto Facebook, uh, through friends that kept coming at me saying join you know join me here and I couldn't understand it at the time like why what am I doing and it really like and I definitely couldn't saw any business practicality at 2007 but I even was struggling with my friends but eventually it was so many close friends that I'm like fine I'll just sign up so you guys stop pestering me like that was more of my reasoning but what I, what I want to ask you out of that, so I just remember 2007, I was an early adopter, even though um, I wasn't ready to adopt uh, but what I'm curious about in the Grammy side is is that what you did to get nominated for those Grammys? Because that's a lot of Grammy nominations yeah. in two years or over two years. Yeah. Social is, media. 
is it is it still possible today the way you did it, or has that world changed so much that it wouldn't be as possible to get nominated like that? Like in other words, what you did was that because it was so new? Great question. I think no. I think social media is still very much a platform. We have for the Grammy side for oh, like getting nominated for any for any self promotion of anything, whether you're an author or a dancer or a musician. Social media is definitely. Look at Billie Eilish. Look at um, uh, Shawn Mendes. Like there are people. Uh, gosh, Taylor Swift is a master at, at social media. Uh, um, Adele. So social media is definitely a way to stay connected to your fan base. Now, can you reach the same level of fandom, or, or can a can an unknown like me do it? Yes, but it just might take a little bit longer. I just had this advantage that in order to qualify for Grammy nominations. I, I needed to get into like a certain pool. I did not win any Grammy nominations and I did not make the finals. So just the fact that I could get in the door, that was such a huge accomplishment, especially considering at the time, not having a record label, doing your, your own independent music production, like that was relatively new and ballsy. And so the, the nominated part versus winning, um, so, the part that nominated, that's based on probably numbers, is it? Like numbers of people supporting you type thing? So what you do is when you submit your music to be Grammy nominated, it has to first qualify. And so you need to have a distributor, you need to have a certain number of songs, and you need to have an app. It's, it, forgive me, it's been 12 years. Yeah, for so sure. It's been a while since I've submitted anything. But the point is, is that um, there are certain, certain qualifications that allow you to get in the gate. I met those qualifications, and if I recall, in 2007, it was something like 17,000 submissions, and I was part of the group that qualified. So I, it's almost like I made the semifinals. Yeah. And then you made the finals, and then you are the winner. But now how for your bio, because this is a marketing message for people, what you're saying here, I think this is like a masterclass in some ways in the sense that I always talk about leverage, you know, you being able to see as seen on or as heard on. I don't think enough people realize how powerful it is. There's so many people that have been on big shows and nobody ever knows. Right. And, and then they think, well, they saw me live, but that's a totally different world. And maybe the people won't let you use the video. So, but you can still have a banner that says I was seen on these. So just like saying Grammy nominated. I'm assuming that carries a lot of weight when people say, you were Grammy nominated? Right. Well, actually, yeah. interestingly enough, I have to say I'm Grammy qualified. Okay. Because I originally, I did say I was Grammy nominated because I didn't understand it. And I was like, oh, I got Grammy nominated. And then I got a letter from the Grammy attorney group saying, um, no, technically, the five finalists are Grammy nominated. Then there's the Grammy winner. You didn't. And I'm like, oh, sorry, and thanks. You know? And so, and did they tell you what you could say, or did yeah, you ask? Grammy what? qualified. Okay, Grammy yeah. qualified. So, so it is, it is an interesting nuance because we want to self-promote because it's like, oh my gosh, but it really needs to be authentic and, and you need to be able to back it up. Kind of like, oh, well, Corey Poirier sent me. Well, please make sure that Corey Poirier really sent me right. versus me using your name in a way that I shouldn't. Right, and to that point, I guess you, you, if you want it still to have that weight, on the wording side, if it was 19, I forget the number, but you could say, uh, and she was qualified for 19 Grammys. Exactly. Which technically sounds even bigger in some ways. Because rather than saying I was nominated for Grammy, qualified for 19, because most people still don't know the language. So uh, what I wanted to ask you as we start, as we bring things to a close, is uh, about your blue talk. Uh, what was, and then when I say this, I'm not looking necessarily for what did you think about being on a blue talk stage, like uh, from a perspective of a testimonial, but just more um, from your perspective, what went into your blue talk, bringing it to life, getting on stage, all that kind of stuff. Can you tell us kind of where your head was and is that? Oh my goodness. So I practice my speech three times a day, every day for a month. So I knew it cold. And then of course, when I got on there, I got visually distracted and I had to start over. Ah! And uh, I also had a spot where I wasn't totally in the flow of things. And I was just like, what comes next? So it's so interesting to me how we can polish and polish our little diamond and you know things things get in the way you know what you just got to roll with it you just got to roll with it what i like about being in this environment is it's intimate and 
I have met everybody in the audience. I love that mm -hmm. because I can feel like I'm speaking directly to them. And their support is so palpable and, and, and cherished, right? And then um, when you do have a false start or you have a misstep, whatever degree that is, everyone loves you and supports you in that moment. So I think that Blue Talks are certainly uh, very user friendly, <laughs> especially for those who are newer to the public speaking scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it's just an honor and it's a joy. It's been it's been an incredible ride. Oh, well, thank and, you so much. Uh, yeah, I look forward to the next opportunity. Awesome. No, that's I, I so appreciate that. And one of the things that's really cool, just to back up what you said, is we had yesterday and today a lot of authentic standing ovations and when i say that nobody said to anybody you should stand up if you like a speaker there's no coaxing and to your point a lot of that was to do with the support the synergy yes. and to me a standing ovation whatever the room number is is still a standing ovation because people still have to choose i'm going to tell this person they impacted me in some way so i love that uh so my last question then jen to, just to finish this off is how can we learn more so people want to connect with you further or so I, I, gosh, I have so many different uh, ways of connecting with people. So I own Rockstar Marketing, and Rockstar Marketing is spelled funky because I'm not the only Rockstar marketer on the planet. It's rock-star-mktg, which is the abbreviated version of marketing, dot com. And then I also have released, I don't know if I've told you, I've released new online training courses. I teach my marketing expertise in online courses now, and that's learnwithrockstarmarketing.com, and that's all spelled out, learnwithrockstarmarketing.com. And to get the book, it's jenniferfilzen.com, or you can go to Amazon. So forgive all the different properties, but as a marketer, there's various brands and various ways to get things done. But I tell you what, it's, it, it's a, a beautiful whole. And uh, if you were, when in doubt, Google me, Jennifer Filzen, F as in Fred, I-L, Z as in Zebra, E-N, Jennifer Filzen, Rockstar Marketing. I'm sure you'll be able to find my contact information if you want to get a hold of me. Awesome. Well, Jennifer, this has been an absolute pleasure. Bye.